I starting? All right. So, hello everyone, and welcome to the session Our Socket: The Future of Protocol. First of all, thank you all for coming, and it's my pleasure to talk in there and explaining why is this a future protocol and not just a protocol, another protocol. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Oleg. I'm software engineer. I'm based in Kiev, Ukraine, and. I'm welcoming everyone to visit Ukraine. This is a beautiful country, and we have tons of software engineering conference so we can combine learning with exploring new, new, new sightseeing and so forth and so on. So I'm working uh, in Netify company. Uh, I have some experience with reactive programming. I've been contributing uh, to Project Reactor almost for three years, and nowadays at this company I'm working on our socket. Basically, I'm one of the uh, core developer of our socket protocol. Part of that, I wrote a book, so I have some experience in reactive programming, and I hope I'm allowed, um, allowed to talk about reactive programming. All right, uh, our agenda. During this talk, we are going to start what problem basically we have nowadays and in which era we are living today. Then we are going to, to do a short hint into our socket, and finally, you, you are seeing how to apply our socket in action. But since this is a short talk, I'm going to show how to apply our socket in the following talk, which is about multiplayer Pacman, teacher Pacman, uh, with reactive streams and machine learning. All right, so let's start with the history of protocol. Back in the days, uh, we were building networking, right? The main idea which um, humanity tries to solve is how to connect different computers in a, in a single, with each other. And during this period of time, we tried to create different protocols. Big companies like Microsoft tried to reinvent their protocols, their proprietary, pro proprietary protocols. But fortunately, those proprietary protocols went into the history, and we got only a single open source protocol which solved most of the problem in this period of time. Then, in 2000s or millennium, we turned in a different kind of pro set of problems, and basically at this period of time we started building service-oriented service pro application, or we started doing service-oriented or uh, architecture. So we started uh, trying to, to build applications which are communicating with each other um, on the application level. And at this period of time, of course, we started inventing different protocols again. Microsoft decided to do com DC com, and we got Corba. And most of you most probably have never heard and never tried those protocols. If you try it, you know what is, what is the pain. But we know that HTTP as an open source and community protocol became the standard for doing messaging and communication. And those proprietor went into the history. And nowadays, nobody using that. Then we turned in the next generation of problems. Basically, this is a little bit opinionated. We started building web application. We started building. Um, kind of distributed system, and we again need required to, to, to create another solution for this set of problems. Again, we created ESB, XML, SOP, and yeah, most of you heard about that protocols, but again, they went into the history because they were proprietary, and we got pressed as an open source and common solution for most kind of, for building a modern application, or kind of modern application. And finally, we are coming to nowadays. So what kind of protocols do we have nowadays? Basically, we have HTTP2, we have almost HTTP3, we have MQTT, gRPC. But the main question, what kind of problem do we have today? And the main question, whether those protocols can solve and can still keep up with that set of problems. So what do we have today? That's the main question. Actually, we are living in the era of microservices and the growing uh, era of microservices. Due, it, due to the report uh, from, one of the, um, from one of the sources displayed lower, 91% of air to enterprises already moved to microservices. 98% uh, of them experienced um, 88% of them started exploring new environments. So they started moving to clouds, to Azure, to AWS, to different containers and different environments. And 99% of them experienced challenges in building microservices. 
Therefore, we have to ask the next question, what do we need today? Maybe from the communication perspective, because we have seen during the whole history how protocols solve our problems. So how, from communication perspective, we can solve problems of nowadays? And nowadays, what do we need from the, basically from the communication? First of all, we need message-driven communication, right? Because we don't want to send bytes. We don't want to send binary things and then collect them on the different sites. We want to send messages. Even though they could be binary, we want to send messages, receive messages, and that's it. Then we need highly performant communication because you know, if you want to use something slow, then you want to create tons of instances and then you will pay tons of money for those instances because nowadays cloud is really expensive. Then we want to have something flexible in terms of communication patterns, right? We don't want to just use request response for solving all the problems. Today we are trying to build live streaming application, so we need kind of streaming communication partner one way, another way, or even bi-directional streaming, or even peer-to-peer -peer communication. And finally, we need strive forward stability, which means that we don't have to reinvent tons of wheels or millions of different solutions which are going to improve stability of the system. We want to have something built in, pretty simple, non-complicated in our protocol, right? And finally, we want to make sure that our communication way or protocol working everywhere. It's working everywhere. It works even on the teapot, right? It doesn't have to be stick to particular things. So coming back to our history line, we defined that we are living in cloud native and microservices era. And we have to ask the question whether all of these mentioned protocols can solve this set of problems and can fit this set of requirements. From my point of view, unfortunately, those protocols can't solve this, this set of problems simultaneously at the same time without doing something extra. Because all of them have some gaps in particular things and in particular places. And most of them are built on top of previous technologies. And maybe technologies invented a decade before can't be super useful nowadays. Therefore, we decided to create something absolutely fresh and new. And we, got, and we called this protocol our socket. So you may wonder what our socket is. Basically, our socket is a protocol built by really huge companies which knew how to build microservices, stable microservices, resilient and reactive systems. And from a sense, our socket is basically layer four or six network protocol. It follow reactive stream semantic, so it follow all this reactive streams feature that you heard about. It also provide application level flow control, so you don't have to 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 do some buffering on or windowing, which TCP provides to us. You can specify how many messages you want to consume. This is really cool, and a part of that it provides different way of different way of messaging. You can use RPC, you can use even driven messaging. So it gives you ability to send real message, not bytes, but real message, which is cool. Finally, it's super fast and performant. It's 10 times faster than HTTP. All right, a little bit in internals. I want to explain how, why this protocol is so cool and how does it work underneath. So basically, this protocol is a binary, and it provides binary messaging. What does it mean from, from your perspective? Basically, you want to send a JSON, or you want to send a Pacman, for example. So the only thing you have to do is basically encode your Pacman in binary format. So this is simple, right? You can really simply encode your JSON into binary message. Then you don't have to care on how this message will be delivered. This is done by protocol. The only thing you will receive on the opposite side is the same binary message. So you will be able to simply decode it back to your JSON or Pacman, for example. All right, what else? In general, um, protocol provides everything for you. And not only binary message and data sending, but everything, as well as headers and data in a single payload. So in data, you can encode everything. It could be any size. Uh, payload or data, I don't know, JSON. And you can encode as well as metadata, so it could be anything. Moreover, we have something called and define it in the protocol like composite metadata. And composite metadata not only let you define some predictable, um, encodable and decodable things, but it 
allows you to define, for example, something like a routing, or it allows you to define, for example, MIME type for your payload, so your responder will be able to extract and figure out what is, what, what, what is that payload in particular. All right, what about performance? The protocol utilizes something called multiplexing. So basically, you are allowed to create only a single connection and then multiplex as many as you want simultaneous and logical streams. And underneath, protocol does everything in order to distinguish and define and put the mark, like this is the stream number one, this is the stream number two, and so forth and so on. From the user perspective, the only thing you need is operate with reactive streams. So for example, you can use Project Reactor in order to stream your data on the one side, as well as handle flux or monoff messages on the other side. And that's it. You don't have to deal with, low, with this low level um, uh, definitions and uh, parts and things. All right, what about flexibility? My super uh, cool and the most important part of our socket is flexibility in terms of trans transport. As I said, our socket is layer five, layer six protocol, which means that it could work on top of anything. It could work on top of any layer four protocol. For example, it could work on top of WebSocket, right? It provides message framing for WebSocket, it provides logical stream IDs, and it does everything that you need. As well as it, it does the same for TCP, and you can use even Quick, and you can use Aeron. So there is no any constraints in terms of transport. You can use the same protocol in order to communicate with your browser and server or over a WebSocket, for example, as well as you can use different connection, different port in order to communicate with the same application but desktop application over Aeron, right? This is super flexible and super powerful. And this is the main advantage of our socket comparing, for example, to HTTP 2, 3, or any other version. All right, what about stability? Our socket provides, as I said, our socket is Reactive Streams um, specification as a network protocol. So we have built-in uh, definition of back pressure, real back pressure. So if your client say, okay, I want five messages, it says, give me five elements. This request will be translated as a frame. It will be sent over the wire and will be decoded back as a request. It's the same request, five or 10 or 11 elements and your producer or publisher will be able to produce exactly that number of elements as you requested, which is super powerful. Moreover, we have something even more advanced. We have something, for example, called leasing, or ability to server sell its capacity. You can imagine that many times you, you define rate limiters, you define circuit breakers in order to just keep your server working under specific number of connections or prevent extra number of connections. Now you don't have to reinvent the wheel in order to, to do that. Server can easily sell or send a frame which says, okay, buddy, you can give me, for example, five, uh, you can do only five requests, for example, for the next 10 seconds. This is how server can sell its capacity and it can monitor it and do, depends on any other circumstance, circumstances uh, difference, uh, differentiation of, of uh, capacity selling. A part of that, it's, it's kind of natural rate limiting, and it's kind of built-in circuit breaker, which is super useful, and you don't have to use uh, existing, non-efficient, I would say, implementation of this pattern. All right, a part of that, it provides wide, really wide communication pattern. It's not only about streaming, it's about all type of communication, because we have simple request response, response, so you can do simple messaging back and forth. You can do request streams, so you can request for a stream of messages, or even more, you can do bi-directional streaming, so you can stream stream of uh, a number of messages as well as receive them back. And even more, we have fire and forget, so if you wanna just send something and forget about that, like log, you can do that really easily, which is super efficient and lightweight. All right, client is not only uh, we remember that, for example, in HTTP we have client-server communication. In our socket, uh, we have client and server, of course, just in order to create a single connection. That's the only time we have client and server. After that, we have peer-to-peer -peer communication. So both clients and server in the past can be responder to any request, and we don't have any kind of constraints on that side as well. So any one of them can request some data from both sides. Finally, 
Our socket is a polyglot, so we have different implementation in different languages. So we have implementation in Java, JavaScript, C++. Nowadays, we have even Ruby, Python, uh, Rust, and, and Go. So it's super cool platform, and it's really cool uh, in terms of evolution. All right, what about user experience? Because we all love, for example, Sprint Framework. How many of you are using Sprint Framework? Perfect. Almost the whole user of Sprint. I love you. So in general, if you don't like Spring, of course you can't like Spring, you can use our socket RPC, like gRPC, but our socket RPC. Or you can use our socket IPS, just simple binary messaging. Or you can use our socket GraphQL, or you can use Spring Boot Starter, our socket, which is perfect fit for all Spring users. All right, what about cons? Our socket has its, 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 its cons. It's pretty bright and new technology. It's still under development. We, we, we're still doing improvement to specification and uh, existing implementation. It lacks good documentation. So if you start using, you would try to, to, to look into the source code first and then into existing documentation, even though there is not documentation so far. There is lack of implementation, uh, for example, in Swift. Python in Rust is still under development, but we have something. All right, what about pros? Cloud native protocol, designed for high performance. Resilient is first class citizen is building into the protocol. And we are doing our best to make it better. And we, under we, I'm saying Reactive Foundation, we, we, under which we have different, many, many companies like Lightband, Netify, and Pivotal, and even more. All right, what next? Basically, you may take a look at something different, the next level of network. You remember that nowadays we are communicate, communicating over routers, right? And we are doing TCP between computers. Now you can imagine a little bit different picture. What if our application can communicate over our socket, over our socket broker, and then build the same network of applications which are resilient, stable, and work really with high performance? But this is the future, and I'm ready to talk about that uh, backstage, but this is another talk. All right, takeaways. Most of yesterday protocols have its own gaps. Our socket covers all of most all of cloud native and microservices use cases and requirements. We will still under development, which is kind of cons, but community is growing, we are improving our solution, and we are believing in what we are doing. All right, basically, if you wanna learn something new about our socket, please follow our web page. Uh, there is a video channel, so if you wanna learn something uh, and look at the other um, talks, please follow this video channel. And there is community, so if you want to ask anything about our socket, you're welcome to visit that web page. All right, that's basically it. Thank you for your attention, and have a nice conference. <laughs>